Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'ma take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I said, Lovers and friends. Uh, I'ma hold you down, down to the end. I said, Um. Okay. What's your breakup song? Let me tell you something. Okay. The Summer Walker Still Over It album came out at the right time. It came out right when I broke up with my ex-boyfriend. What's the song? The whole album. I got to play the song right now. I need the song. What's the okay, one? Okay, well, fourth baby mama. But I'm not a baby mama. <laughs> okay. He doesn't have any baby mamas. But when she says, I want to start with your mama, she should have whooped your ass. I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it just hit different for me. I don't know what it was. Summer just gets me. I was more on, like, the fuck you end of things. Um, I wouldn't say was because today I wanted to start the episode to ensure that I was mm -hmm. up to date. And mm -hmm. so I said, are you still broken up? You said forever. Forever. So there's yes. no bounce. Yes. There's no was. Yes. yes. Yeah, we're firmly done. Is. Done, done. It's over. And I messaged you, like, yes. Mm -hmm. And not because I, I don't know your partner. I don't know uh -huh. anything about your guys' relationship at all. I was excited because I love breakups. Yeah. I think they're fun. Yeah. I think that it's a fresh start. I think that fire burns, but it also clears space mm -hmm. and it creates opportunity for new growth. And I just know a lot of my biggest progresses, a lot of my biggest epiphanies came after breakups. So I just, I just know what they can inspire and I'm excited for people who get to have that. Yeah, you know, this one, this breakup was the hardest. I think it was probably the second hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my entire life. Like in my adult life, like moving to LA was one very traumatic event for me because I never thought that I would move across the country. But the breakup, I legit thought that I was going to have to be hospitalized. Like I was like, I am losing my mind. Like I felt crazy. I feel like, you know, it is a binary thing, but I feel like as women, like we know when it's not right, like we know, but we'll still try. And like, you know, we'll still have the conversations and be like, well, maybe, and then you have to kind of undo and unlearn and unthink and unfantasize about the things that like your life was supposed to be with this person. Even up to like baby names, like we had talked about all these things yes. because this was where we were headed at the time. So to think about like not having these things felt and feels for a lot of people who are going through breakups, it just feels like really empty. Cause it's like, what, where, where am I gonna fill this space and with who and what? And so I think that we do a lot of that where we know something isn't right, but we still keep trying to like make it right. Yes, of course. Cause you've made the investment. It's right. like that um, casino slot machine syndrome. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get up and leave this slot machine mm -hmm. cause I've already put in so much quarters. And if I get up, next person is going to come and put in 50 cents and hit the jackpot. Yeah. But I think when you've done the work that you've done on yourself and you're yeah. in therapy and you're strikingly stunning and so successful, when I hear you say these questions, like what's going to be the person and when am I going to meet them and how are we going to connect? And I'm just like, my tone in hearing that is like, who's the next person going to yeah. be and what's it going to happen and what's my life going to look like? It feels <laughs> exciting and fresh and open. And especially if we have that feeling of this isn't right, because a lot of people have that feeling mm -hmm. and just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we both towards the end knew that it wasn't working out. Our careers changed. Um, we both grew as people, and I feel, we both feel that we kind of grew in different directions. I find what one of the faults is with relationships and intimacy in general is that we share the beginning. Mm -hmm. We talk about how we met, how we connected. We talk about the highs. We talk about our first vacation together, our first time meeting the family, we tell the story and then we get to the breakup and we say irreconcilable differences. Mm. You know, like I'm thinking of Megan Good and Devon Franklin who mm -hmm. shared so much about their relationship. And then in the end, I mean, obviously for privacy reasons, but then also it leaves people who already have such a gap when it comes to intimacy education mm -hmm. and how to build healthy relationships who have modeled and followed your relationship completely unclear as to where the pain point was or what went wrong. Yeah. So I want to ask how you broke up, but I want to ask it like this, the meeting point, the high, the low, and the no. The meeting point. The point that you're like, this could be my person. Ah, uh, I think it was the first day that we met, for sure. I saw him at a party and I was like, I want him. I was also wasted off the Henny. Um, <laughs> that's why I don't drink brown because <laughs> it turns me into a different person. And I went up to him and I grabbed his chains 
he had like these Jesus pieces on and I grabbed them and I was like, I like your chains. And then I just went back and sat back down. Oh my gosh. And he was shook. He was like, like literally jaw dropped. He was like, wait, cause he had noticed me at the party. Yes. Me and told his friends that he What a good me. story. It's a great story. <laughs> I still love telling the story because it truly was like a really beautiful moment in time. But like, He'd already told his friends that he saw me, but he was like, there's no way that I would have come up to you because I just wasn't in that headspace. And I was like, well, neither was I, but the honey put me there. So here I am. So after that, we literally hung out that night and talked in like a loud club until like five o'clock in the morning. We danced and like had the, this was when um, Drake's one dance came out and we just had like the best fucking time oh. and it was beautiful um so that was i would say the that was the meat and that was really really lovely and then the high um i think the high was when we met each other's families and like we went on our first little kind of trip together to um, visit his family in the bay area and it was just like a very it was just a very beautiful experience for both of us and you know it, it felt like like this is going somewhere And like, we both said, I love you for the first time. And it was like very, well, he said it first. And then I was like, I don't want to say it yet because you said it. Like, I want to say it on my time, on my time. Mm -hmm. And I waited a little while and then I said it, I think that trip. Like 15 minutes later. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay. I love you. (laughs) Okay, fine. (laughs) Same. So that was like, I think the high. Okay. So the low, the low was definitely a few months after we both moved to L.A. So we, did, we were together for five years. Some of them were in New York and then the rest were in L.A. I moved to L.A. first for my career. I knew I had to do it. It wasn't really like a, a mutual decision where I was like, are you going to come or what? I, I was, I'm doing this because I need to. But I care about you and I love you and like we'll make it work however we have to. He ended up getting a job opportunity also in L.A. Just like it, it's, it felt like a lot of things in our relationship happened by fate. So, you know, it, he ended up coming out here and it was great. And then, you know, like I said, career changes. Um, we both kind of like rose at a similar pace. I just think I handled it a little bit differently. Well, your rise was coupled with self-care mm-hmm. and with personal mm-hmm. growth. Yeah. Where maybe his, he was all consumed by the career growth. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think also for men, like I try to give them some grace as far as like, how they feel when it comes in relation to finances. I don't think that they talk about it enough openly because you don't want to seem like a broke dude or like, you don't want to seem like you don't have your shit together. And like, there's this pressure. So I think that, you know, for them, they think like, okay, a lot of them, at least, and I mean, I general, I'm not generalized, but for a lot of them, I think it's, you know, I got to work. I got to work. I got to provide, I got to do, you know, and that pressure also, takes a toll on a relationship and on a person. We talked about this. I had an episode that was about pressure to marry. And we talk about how women have this insurmountable amount of pressure to get engaged. Mm -hmm. And it feels like men today have the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's delay, delay, delay. And I had a really great aha in that episode because I had to pressure the fuck out of Jared to get married. Like I was, it was not subtle at all. (laughs) Literally at all. (laughs) Um, You're like, we get married. And we were discussing it. And my brother-in-law in the episode had a really great aha for me in that the pressure is alleviated for women once they get married. That now, okay, I've accomplished this societal thing and mm. I'm now with a partner. We, we're going to achieve financial stability together. I feel safer and more secure. But for men, the pressure begins at marriage. Mm. Now I'm responsible for somebody else. Now I have to upkeep a family. Yeah. Now I have to appear like I have everything under control. Yeah. So why would they want to enter into, into a situation that's going to actually add to the pressure that they already feel? Yeah. And then you add kids and like a home and it, there's it's a lot and I don't I don't so I think that that was kind of where the low started and then where the no began was just like character changes that it's like is this a character like a permanent character change or is this just like for the moment because I am I'm a ride or die like I truly truly am and when it comes to relationships I'm a ride to the wheels fall off. And it really has not been, to, it's been like more to my detriment because <laughs> I like to wait for it to literally boot, like burst into flames. I want to see the particles. <laughs> like I'm not leaving until I get a third degree. The bomb goes off and I have a third degree. And I'm like, oh, okay. Not for me. <laughs> like that, that's what it takes for me because I, I think I see the potential. 
I tend to see the potential in who the person used to be versus what I'm seeing right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I'm trying to get myself out of um, because sometimes people do change and it's not even that it's a bad thing necessarily. I've definitely changed from when we first started dating, but are the changes that you're seeing good for you where you are right now? Like, mm -hmm. will it, will it help you to be able to continue your own personal growth? And for me, it wasn't. My favorite explanation for potential success of relationships or looking at relationships in terms of like, could this work is a stool. And so the four legs of a stool in a relationship are attraction. Obviously you had that from the chain story. Mm -hmm. It's this immediate, like I'm drawn to you. And that's important. It's the rocket that sets a relationship off. Then you have shared values is what matters to me, what matters to you? Mm -hmm. And how does that show up in your everyday choices? What do you prioritize? When you're given access and you're given options, what is the compass that guides you? Then there's long-term goals. What do you see for yourself down the line? Do we have shared long-term goals? And then there's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How I wanna spend my free time, is that how you like spending your free time? Mm -hmm. And when you weigh all those things in and you're like, we actually had a two-legged stool or we had a one-legged stool. Or maybe we had a four-legged stool that lost a couple legs along the way. And then mm -hmm. that teetering act just became too much. Um, so in reflection to that, where do you feel, do you feel like you guys had a four, a three, two? I felt like we had a seat cushion. <laughs> we had a traction. And a slide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what I felt. That's what it felt. It felt like we had a two-legged stool with one of the stems was cracked and I was underneath trying to hold it up. That's mm -hmm. how it felt by myself. I see that. Yeah, that's how it felt. And, you know, we had an honest conversation about this after the breakup and a very, very good conversation. We both left feeling very, very good about it. Um, and I just, I said, I was like, you know, I felt like I was pouring into your cup and the cup of our relationship. And I wasn't really pouring into myself. Whereas I felt that you were just pouring into your cup and nothing was going into our relationship and nothing's going into me. So what am I, what am I left to do? And he actually opened my eyes to some things that I know in my next relationship, I need to do better at. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah. He felt that at times he was being controlled. And I said, you were, <laughs> you absolutely were. And it was really me out of desperation for trying to keep our relationship on the track that we had set that anytime he would do something that I felt was not conducive to that, I'm like, we got to stay on track. Like we got to stay on track. And it, it, at times he felt like I was trying to mother him, which I probably was. Right. Like I probably was. I think it's a great reflection point too, because in relationships, we often think so much about what the other person is and what they bring to the table. And we don't think about what we want to see in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like how do I want to be in reflection to what we share? Mm -hmm. And if who you are is great on paper, but in combination with what I know my triggers are and my tendencies or my shadows are, yeah. you bring out that worst part of me, then this is not a fit. Yeah. So I think it's important to note that, but it's probably also the... I would say collaboration of the two of you mm -hmm. that brought this side out because yeah, when you get to a point where you feel like I don't trust your value system or I don't trust your decision making, I have mm -hmm. to step in and do those things for you. Yeah. But that should be a red flag to say that it's not right. And yeah. I definitely, definitely felt that. And it, we also, we both agreed that we had a power shift in our relationship and like the power dynamics were, it, it was, it was off. And I told him that the reason why I personally felt that that was happening is because I felt like I was taking control so much as far as leading the relationship where we were going. I didn't feel like I could just be my like feminine self. And I felt like I was taking on more traditional masculine energy. And as like, I, I talked about it in my podcast this week, like, yeah, I might sound misogynistic, but like, that's how I felt. And at this point in my life, like I'm looking for a man to lead me mm -hmm. because I'm tired of taking the reins. Like, yes. I want I want you to pass me every once in a while. Like you could take a nap and I'm like, oh, okay, don't take a nap. I'll, I got it. Like I'll drive the car, but I can't be at the front seat every day with the kids in the back and you over here sleeping and then you wake up and you eat a French fry and then you go back and take a nap and then you get out the car and now I'm driving by myself and then you come back in. It's like, it's too much. It's a lot. Yeah. It's I had that conversation much. with Jared in my marriage, maybe when we first had Ryu of like, there's got to be some areas that I don't have to be involved in at all. Mm -hmm. I need to feel like there are some places that 
get done top to bottom without any intervention from me. Yeah. yeah. And I realized too, it's a part of my love language system. Like it literally is. Acts of service and quality time are my top two. So I'm gonna need you to take some shit off my plate. And if I feel like I'm the one who is constantly doing for our relationship, I'm not saying he wasn't doing for him because he was definitely grinding his shit out. And I appreciate that. And I think he's one of the hardest working people that I know. And men are conditioned to believe that that is the act that does support and help the family. Yes, exactly. And he said that. He was like, I knew that me working hard was going to be beneficial for you in the long run. So I'm like, she understands. She gets it. She knows, like, she knows, she knows me. But bruh. <laughs> right. It just got to the point where it was just too. It Future was just Cammy too was much. tired. Future Cammy, Future Cammy was, was like, look. <laughs> Exhausted. We get it might work out in the future for us, but I see you back there in the present struggling. Yeah. It's okay. Circling back to that on that note of pretty from the future, I feel like breakups can feel very heavy. And I wish I could tell people like when I think about, I used to work with a lot of young girls in high school and they would tell me about these breakups and how crazy it made them and how hard it was. And I would be like, oh, I remember, yeah. I remember the stories. I literally wrote a short story from the perspective of the washcloth in my ex-boyfriend's bathroom because- What was up with the washcloth, Cher? This is the story. I've told the story before, but <laughs> let's go. Essentially, it was the moment that, it was my high moment in the relationship. Mm. We had just had sex and mm. I went into the bathroom with him. He washed me with the washcloth from head to toe and ended off on my ass crack, like washed it. This was in high school? No, it wasn't. It was in my early twenties. Oh, I was like, um, he had his own man. place. <laughs> Where is Where's he, he at? <laughs> Where is he? He ended off with my ass crack with this washcloth, and then he went to wash himself, and the first thing he washed was his tongue. And I felt like this has to be the sign. Oh my god! That I'm here forever. Yeah, you want to put my dirty ass. In your mouth? On your mouth. You're my husband. Right. And you clearly, you're showing me that yeah. I'm. you're my wife. Yeah. And so I think from that point on, I let my guard down. Mm. And I was just like, this is it. This is my person. Mm -hmm. I made scrapbooks for him. Like I did. I went all in. And then it ended up how 20 relationships end up. Same, basically, I got oh. ghosted. But oh. nonetheless, I like went a little bit like loopy after mm -hmm. that. But I have that story still. And I look back and I'm like, God damn, mm -hmm. like this is what being alive is about. Mm -hmm. It's the highs and it's the lows and it's knowing that you got through it. Yeah. And it's remembering those feelings and being like, wow, look where I am today. And so if I had to give myself advice back then, it's like as much as you're going through the turmoil and the shit, somewhat sit and savor in that because there's gonna be a point in time in your life that you're gonna look back and be like, I wish I could just quickly flash you a card to show you what it's gonna be like in the future. Yeah. And I love the fact that you still said, the things that you guys had, those three years are still beautiful. Mm -hmm. You're not taking that away. No, no. But then I, I realized that towards the end of the, the relationship, I would think back on those times and I would just cry. Cause I would be like, when is that coming back? Like, is that gonna ever come back? Will we ever get back there? And you know, I think a part of me just chalked it up to like, girl, that was the honeymoon phase, an extended honeymoon phase. But like, it's not realistic for relationships to be like this all the time. But I'm, now I'm like, actually I want somebody where it's like this forever with. I think it can. It can. Yeah, but I think the definition of what that passion looks and feels like kind of might shift and change. Like maybe it's very sexual or maybe it's very passion driven. And then maybe the level of intimacy becomes really companionate during times. But mm -hmm. that consistency of like that feeling, mm -hmm. I think that that's entirely possible. Yeah. Um, but let me ask that question though. Are you able to sit in this pain and relish in it knowing that it's gonna work out. Oh yeah, 1000%. I'm actually so excited for the future. And I was telling my parents this and my dad was like, is you lying? I'm like, no, like that, I genuinely feel like what I'm looking for, what I keep, I keep reframing from saying what I'm looking for to what will find me. And oh, tell me about that reframe if you don't mind. Yeah, so I, I made a list in my phone and I, I titled it, what I'm looking for in a man. And then I thought about it and I was like, but this isn't like what I'm looking for. Like this is gonna find me because this is what I want. This is what I deserve. This is what I need. God knows that, the universe knows that, the stars know that. So th it's gonna find me. Mm -hmm. So I literally changed the title. I was like, meh, delete, delete, back six, back six. <laughs> I was like, delete all that shit. Like what will find me is a man that is 
this and that. And, you know, it, it was a very specific list, but also very not. And I think that what is on the list is going to come to me. He's going to find me. He's there. Okay, let's end this off with what is your like classic high school breakup song? It was probably something Taylor Swift, if I'm being honest. Okay, Taylor Swift, Red. The Fearless album, my soul is attached to it. There's so fucking many good songs. Do you know Begin Again? No. Okay, we have to end with that. Where's my goddamn phone? <laughs> like, we have oh, to play it. you have it. your phone? You gotta get it. Listen, listen to the musical stylings. In a cafe. <laughs> I watched it begin again. Hey! Uh, that's it. I love it. That's it. Uh, that's so good. On a fucking Wednesday in a cafe, I watched it begin again. Mm. So I ended that interview off with Cammy and I played the song Begin Again for her. And I played it for her aspirationally. Like mm. one day, you're going to look back at all the pain and the hurt that you're going through right now. And you're going to be like, it was for a reason because it allowed space in my life for this new connection. Mm -hmm. And I brought you here because you're in that place. Yeah. I mean, I, I've already been through that. You've been through the rough part. Yes. But being with the person, that makes that rough part make sense. Yes. And makes you look back and be like, man, I was really fighting for something that wasn't ever meant to be mine. Right. So without saying a lot, because I know you can't say a lot, but what can you share about your newest relationship? First. Your newest and truest relationship. Yes. I adore you guys together. Thank and you. I've said that Me a lot too. about your partners because it was the right thing to say to a friend. <laughs> but I'm telling you that from the bottom of my heart. I'm so happy for you. I know. You. I, I feel that you mean it this time. And I and I, pre I appreciate it. I love it. It makes me feel good. But I just want to say what you just did, that bar you just dropped was better than Taylor Swift. Could, she wishes. She could never. Okay? <laughs> that was great. I can honestly say I'm with my person. You know, the love of my life, the person that I am supposed to be with and the love I guess I've been waiting for forever. And the craziest thing about it is that this was somebody that's been around me for years and somebody that I loved and I cared about. And we were going through a lot of things that we went through as friends. And now we're more than friends. <laughs> How do you know that this is your person? Like what makes it different? I always used to think every time somebody said that damn TV line, like when you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And I was always like, shut the f yeah, I don't wanna hear that. It's real. It just clicks, it just flows. My word is harmony for us. We have harmony. Flow is a word that I love because this book that I listened to called Flow, but um, harmony is a great word too. Thank you. But the heart of that really is, is that when you're with the person that the work is there, but it's not arduous. It's not yeah. backbreaking work. It's not heartbreaking work. It's, if anything, joyful work. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you know you're in the right job. Yeah. Like, and I feel like you now exist in flow because you know this, every time that we talk about your relationships up until maybe the past few months, yeah. I've always been like, what's the update? Right. What's the drama? And you're like, well, we went away for the week. <laughs> and it ended up being only a night because da 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 da. And then so and so, right. like, there was always a story. Yeah. And now, if I said, Amber, what's the update? Happiness. I'm good. There's no back and forth. There's not. There's no climax. There's no crescendo. There's right. no push and pull. There's mm -hmm. just flow. Right. And that's the biggest difference. Cami said this on the podcast and it really struck home. She said towards the beginning that, she was fighting in relationship because she saw the potential in the relationship because of who they used to be. And that's me. I mean, the thing that I can say confidently that I really just did wrong in all my relationships is that I stayed way too long. And that was the biggest reason why is because, you know, at the beginning, it's so good, the honeymoon stage, and you guys are like putting on this good face of like, oh, this is who I am, or um, this is who we can be together or whatever. And this happiness that doesn't last, right? But then I kept fighting for to get that moment back, right? I'm like, oh no, I saw where we could be. So let me just keep fighting because eventually we can get back to this and eventually was too long. Looking back at it now, I didn't care about myself. I didn't know my worth. I shouldn't have kept fighting for something if the other person wasn't fighting with me. I can't fight by myself. That's what Cammy had mentioned too of like, 
I don't want to feel like I'm in the car by myself. Ooh, yeah. Or I look over at you, you're taking a nap. Mm. And you wake up to take a little snack, then you're back to sleeping, and I'm back to navigating this all by myself. Okay. In your past relationship, which is a very public relationship, you guys had a YouTube channel together. You had a formal breakup online. So yeah. you've already, this is not like breaking news right. to anybody. But I watched my friend go through one of the longest most dramatic breakups ever. Yeah. It didn't start off that way. It started off very clean because you guys lived together and you moved out. Yeah. And you found your own spot, which was far away. You didn't like move across the street. Right. Like you definitively moved out. The place you got to me was the perfect bachelor pad yeah. to begin again. But you really didn't. Mm -hmm. Why? I did have the intentions when we first moved out that we just needed space. I realized that whatever she was going through, I couldn't help her through it. And it wasn't me because for a while I'm like working on the relationship thinking that I'm doing something wrong or there's more that I can do to make us happy. But ultimately, I realized that she needed the space to go through the journey on her own. And so when I moved out, I originally thought that we could just take some space and date again. So when I got shut down, it was like another heartbreak all over again. So it's like a brand new beginning. But I had to really work through a lot of emotions that I was feeling on, wow, I lost my person that I thought that I was gonna be with for the rest of my life twice at this point, right? And so I had to push through all the that emotion and some underlining stuff that I found out about that I had to really do work on myself and get myself to realize that the things that I was asking for were not too much, right? I was just asking the wrong person. And also some self-work that I needed to do by realizing some of the issues I was having on and some of the emotion was actually some like childhood trauma I had to work through. So there was a lot going on there. It felt overwhelming, but once I like really grabbed a hold of my emotions and allowed myself to feel those things, I worked through it smoothly. I love that you said that because one of my favorite things about what Cammie said was the accountability she took on. Mm -hmm. Like I realized I became somebody in this relationship in reflection to what we had that I didn't like. Oh yeah. Or that I wasn't down for. Mm -hmm. But then she also talked about because sometimes people are like, oh, it's just you. You pull out the worst in me. But then you have to really reflect on like, well, why is this part of me even accessible? And then to get the answers to that question, you often need help. So for you, it wasn't a matter of I broke up with this person and they just weren't the right person for me. And then la, 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 la I've magically met the right person. Tell yeah. me about that in-between time that prepped you for the relationship that you're in now. First of all, what Cami said of like showing a different side of herself that she didn't like, I definitely been to that point because when you give so much of yourself you end up losing yourself especially when you're the only one fighting that fight right and so i did take a step back in a lot of the situations that we went through looked from the audience and just didn't like what i saw of myself and how i was reacting and that's how i made the connection of saying oh this is some inner work that i gotta do and some stuff from my mom you know what i'm saying like and working through all that and then putting myself out there that was the hardest thing too is like I didn't have any confidence left. Like after that breakup, it really hurt my heart, but it hurt my confidence. And I didn't even know how I was gonna make the step into trying again, but I did it. I threw myself out there and I went on some dates. A lot of them were terrible, but what I realized is I learned the most about myself from those random terrible dates. Yes. Uh, right, like literally, like <laughs> they were so reassuring. looking for. Yeah, you know, a little bit, cause that's hard to find in these streets out here in Los Angeles, but like at high hello, somebody was offering a love language that I really wanted or needed or was yearning for from my past partners that they didn't give me. And if somebody can give me this at high hello on our second date, it gave me some reassurance that my list of things that I want or need from a lover or a partner are in fact feasible. I love that you said that because a lot of people like it's the fact that they have to go and start all over again that makes them stay longer because mm. it takes so much energy to get to know somebody and to get past all those awkward phases and be like, yo, I got to start all over again. So to hear that for you, the starting was in many ways like the most fruitful, I think is really encouraging. Yeah, it, it was actually inspiring for me to do things opposite of how I normally do it. And I was going into it like I'm gaining something from this experience. I'm not supposed to be with this person forever. If you go into every date like that, you're I think you're starting off on the wrong foot, right? It's because you're not opening yourself up enough to like see what you could gain from this person because not everybody is forever is that Mr. or Mrs. right now, right? And so for a lot of those right nows on this one date, five dates, three months, or whatever it is, I'm gaining something from this experience. I needed to change my mindset, which is something that Cammie said, right? I can't go out and search for something, right? Instead, 
let's work on myself. And, and then so I started manifesting what the ideal partner looks for me. Like, what does my perfect lover look like, right? What does she embody? What are some characteristics, some personality traits that I really would enjoy or that I think would mesh with me? In a harmonious bring way. bring the best in you. Right, uh, period. And so I started just like kind of sitting on that and saying, I'm not going to search for this. When the universe wants to provide me with this beautiful human, I'm going to be ready. And I want to clarify, because I know some people right now are watching this like, yes, I knew it. I could just stay home. Nah. And the right person is going to find me. Like, it's going to be the UPS person knocking at the door. And to clarify, we're not saying that you took a passive approach. Instead, you were more mindful about where you spent your time and the kind of people you were around. Mm -hmm. And you were also just not out here searching, but you were visible. And you yeah. made a conscious switch, I saw, mm -hmm. in not just how you were looking, but where you showed up. Absolutely. It, you can't find love in the club, right? Because I knew some Although qualities. Although I did meet Jared at a club. You did, actually. Technically, like, I met him, he didn't meet me. Yeah. He doesn't remember meeting me, but I did see him first in the club and then I followed him. And then I waited a year after researching him to be like, is he a club dude or is he worth my time? Oh, right. Yeah. I actually did meet my partner at the club. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we didn't approach each other like that. Yeah. You know, um, it was going to all the other events together of, you know, the self growth, the empowerment, the. A community of amazing black people in this in in LA it was those type of things where we were able to like really bond and be like oh we have the same ethics and morals and likes and dislike we're in alignment period there was a moment like two years ago where Jared and I were driving to the house that we rented around the corner from here and we just got the drop top so we had the drop top down it was like a beautiful night in LA and we were driving because we were so excited. We loved just driving to that spot. It's like one day we're going to be here. And we had music blasting and we were singing it together. And I just looked over and I thought to myself, yo, if I could take this moment and just share it with old versions of myself who mm. felt hopeless, who felt like they had lost their chance at their dream life, just to know that, trust me, down the line, things get better. Mm -hmm. Do you have a moment in mind that you would flash to yourself as you're on that couch crying, no confidence, in despair, in fear that you had lost your shot at real love? I think it's dancing in the kitchen. That's really what it is. I feel like if you and your partner can just wake up and be so happy that you're dancing in the kitchen while one's doing dishes and one's cooking, and you can just look at each other and smile, like I think that those moments for me, those little moments, like, wow, I could be in this forever. What song is playing? Sade. Either Cherish the Day or No Ordinary Love or the Janae Iko Radio. You were ready for that moment. Okay, because that's every morning. For real. Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'm going to take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, lovers and friends. Uh, I'm going to hold you down, down to the end. I say, Lovers and Friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment Shan Boudram. It is produced by Shan and Crazy Cruz with production support from Two West Entertainment's Adam Krasner and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and performed by Jared Brady, who also does the scoring and engineering on all of our episodes. Lovers and Friends is powered by Audio Boom and made possible by our incredible sponsors, who you can show some love to by reading the show notes. Thank you and see you next week.